Welcome to Matson Field and uh, this baseball matchup. It's senior night for uh, Moorhead and Fergus Falls is the opponent. Uh, we will be joining uh, public address announcer Brad Cusey momentarily for the senior night festivities. So hang with us on Spuds TV. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. You can adjust your volume and your headphones with this one here. Testing one, two, three. You're hearing if it's too loud or no, it's perfect. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Moorhead's Matson Field for Minnesota High School Boys Baseball this evening. A one seven inning ball game between the rivals of Fergus Falls and our Spuds of Moorhead Senior High School. Once again, it's senior night here at Matson Field. In a moment, we're going to honor the players and their parents for senior night. It's also Moorhead Youth Baseball Night. Good chance to get all the youngsters out to enjoy some Spuds baseball here at Matson Field. And again, a special thank you to the Morad Orchestra from the middle school for performing our national anthem this evening at our ball game. Again, concession stands are open at the entrance of the ballpark. Hot dogs, burgers, candy, soda, pop, popcorn, and other items for sale at the entrance of Matson Field. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, tonight is senior night here at Matson Field as our very own spuds of Morehead Senior High School host our friends from Fergus Falls High School. We all would like to extend a warm thank you to all seven of our seniors for your commitment and dedication to Morehead Spuds baseball over the years. We would also at this time like to say thank you to their parents for all of their sacrifice in making baseball such a wonderful experience for each of these young men. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce the players and their parents. First off, we have Grayson Brayton, parents of Becky and Dean Brayton. <laughs> Sterling Hafey, parents Chris and Shane Hafey. Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe, parents Chris and Katie Howe. Thomas Horan, parents Michelle and Terry Horan. <laughs> Noah Pilon with his parent Joe Pilon. Yeah. 
Caleb Sari with parents Matt and Megan Sari. Josh Swanson, parents Dan and Tammy Swanson. Ladies and gentlemen, those are our 2019 Mord High School Spud seniors and their parents. Let's give them a nice round of applause. At this time, we'd like to ask all the Morehead Youth Baseball players, they could run out to the field, I believe, and join the parents and the players and line up on the ball field. We'll give you a moment, hustle up and run out to the third baseline. Be part of the team and the experience here at Matson Field this evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let's meet the starting lineups for both squads. First, for our visitors on the scoreboard, the Otters of Fergus Falls High School. The leadoff batter, center fielder, is number 10, Abel Ajo. Playing first base, number 13, Nick Pearson. On the mound pitching, number 5, Cole Froning. The right fielder, number two, Cole Knutson. Shortstop, number one, Rock Kachavar. At second base, number nine, Jack Baker. Left fielder, number eight, Ian Stumbo. And the plate catching, number four, Jack Culbertson. And at third base, number three, Matt Scott. The head coach of the Fergus Falls Otters, Mr. Kevin Pearson, with the rest of the coaches, players, and staff of the Fergus Falls Otters High School Boys Baseball Team. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting lineup for the home team on the school board, our Spuds of Moorhead Senior High School. Leading off playing center field, number six, Caden Triggs. The shortstop, number seven, Thomas Moran. And the play catching, number nine, Isaac Howe. Batting cleanup. The pitcher number 14, Sterling Hafey. The left fielder number five, Kai Holm. At first base number 26, Grisanto D'Agostino. The Spuds designated hitter number 24, Caleb Sari. At third base number 16, Hayden Netland. At second base, number 12, Noah Pilon. 
And playing in right field, number 15, Josh Swanson. The spuds are coached by Mr. Greg Selmavold, assisted by Mr. Tony Kunkka with the rest of the coaches, players, and staff of the Mort High School Spuds boys baseball team. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if at this time y'all please rise and remove any headgear, face your attention towards center field here at Matson Field, as we're honored to have the Moorhead High School Orchestra here in attendance to perform our national anthem, as well as two seniors from the Spud baseball team, Sterling Hafey and Caleb Sari. Ladies and gentlemen, the Moorhead High School Orchestra and our national anthem. Let's play high school boys baseball here at Matson Field. Again, all the more youth baseball players, make sure that you sign up for prizes to be given away at the entrance of the ballpark. We're going to try and hand out a couple things every inning. And you can look up to me up in the press box for those prizes to be given away. You'll also receive a free ballpark meal, compliments of Morton High School. And we appreciate you coming over this evening to watch Morton High School Spuds Baseball. Good afternoon and welcome to Matson Field in Moorhead as we present high school baseball today as the Fergus Falls Otters on the road to take on the Spuds. The teams with virtually opposite records coming into today's game. Fergus Falls has been struggling to get wins, are 3 and 11. The Spuds knowing that this year could be a very good year, and they've responded so far with 11 wins in the 13 games that have been played 11 and 2 on the year. Fergus Falls will bat first, and they lead things off with Abel Ajo, and he bats 346 and plays center field. Nick Pearson, the first baseman, has a 182 batting average, batting second. Batting third is the pitcher Cole Froning, who bats at 318, and in the uh, pitching department has a 5.09 ERA in his innings pitched. Cole Knutson bats fourth. He's had a 333 batting average and plays right field. Batting fifth is Brock Kachevar, an 095 batting average and as at shortstop. <coughs> Pardon me. Coming up next, Jack Baker, the second baseman, batting at 111. Ian Stumbo in left field is looking for his first at-bat here this afternoon on this baseball season. He'll be followed by Jack Culbertson at 138 on the year in is the catcher, and Matthew Scott at 308 batting average is at third base. So for the Spuds defensively to start things out, Kai Holm in left, Caden Triggs at center, Josh Swanson getting the start in right field tonight, and the infield... 
Spud's making a bit of a lineup change here at the last moment. And so getting the uh, Caleb Sari has been inserted in as the designated hitter. Hayden Netland will play third base today, but will not bat in place of the designated hitter Sari. And um, Crisanto D'Agostino has moved over to first base. So the Spuds will go with that. It's senior night, seven seniors, and they have started all but a couple of this. Every position has a senior at it except for a couple. Uh, juniors Kai Holm and Crisanto D'Agostino hold things down in that department. Spuds on a windy, windy day, somewhat cool temperatures here. And if the winds uh, stay as they are blowing, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable by a little bit later on. But right now, it's uh, not bad. It's a good day to play baseball. Winds coming in left to right and uh, switching over just a bit towards center field. And it's going to be tough, Corey, to get the ball out of the infield in, in, with any kind of regularity and any kind of distance. Absolutely, Larry. I mean, I think the, uh, the wind, what is blowing, is a little bit in. Uh, like you said, it's left to right and maybe a little bit coming straight in out of center. It's a little bit, uh, you know, shifting a little bit. But at any rate, it's not at all blowing out. And so the hitters are going to have to focus on hitting the middle of the baseball or top half of the baseball because anything up in the air is going to hang up for a long time. Something that was brought to our attention that if your pitcher, and in this case, whether it be and whether it be Moorhead's Sterling Hafey or Fergus Falls' Cole Froning, if you have off-speed pitches, curveballs, and you end up hitting little pop-ups, it's just plain not going to go very far. Yeah, so that's going to be the focus of the, the pitchers, right? They want to utilize, uh, you know, the wind advantage and uh, the difficult conditions for the hitters here tonight. Abel Ajo leads things off for Fergus Falls, top of the first inning, and takes a look at the first pitch just off the plate, ball one. 346 batting average, center fielder Abel Ajo. As he looks out and waits, Sterling Hafey has pitched seven innings and has a 4.0 ERA average and uh, does not have, has not been a pitcher of record in the innings that he has pitched. The count is evened up. Here's the look now from Sterling Hafey. As he swings, here's a number to the right side. Hafey there to pick it up, tosses it over to Crisanto, and Abel Ajo is out 1-3 on the putout, and there is one away. That'll bring up Nick Pearson. A 182 batting average is the first baseman for Fergus Falls. He stands in from the right side. Well, good start for Hafey, getting that initial ground ball, getting the leadoff batter. Always a great start for the confidence on the mound. As Hafey leans in, he winds and delivers. Here's the pitch at the knees for a called strike. Quickly ahead on the count. Got a number in the first at bat from Ajo, and now Nick Pearson falls behind 0-1. Somewhat closed stance in the pitch. Catching the outside corner for strike two. That was a good pitch there. Uh, Pearson was looking for something else, and he kind of got locked up on the breaking pitch. So ahead on the count, 0-2, Sterling Hafey leaning in. He's got the one he wants, goes into his delivery, and this one is lined towards left center field. And on the run, nice running play by Kai Holm who went deep into left center field to make the catch. Nice running catch on a line drive. Kai Holm catches that fly ball out. Well, he got a great jump on that because that was a solidly hit ball by Pearson. Uh, looked like it might have had a chance to get to the gap, but again, I, like we talked about before the game started, I think the wind played a little bit of a factor to knock that down. Batting at 318, pitcher Cole Froning is third in the batting order. And he takes a look at called strike one to start things off at his at bat. Batting here with two out in the bottom, of, in the top rather, of the first inning. Sterling Hafey delivers, and this one has followed straight back into the screen, and it goes to 0 and 2. So, so far, Sterling Hafey has been very uh, pleased with his production and looking at and getting the strike zone. Yep, throwing a lot of strikes and uh, making, making the batters swing the bat. Cole Froning waits, Hafey delivers, and this is a line drive to the second baseman. This one is off and played into uh, behind second base. And so Moorhead second baseman Noah Peel on there mishandling that one hopper, and that'll go as an error, and Cole Froning is on uh, the game's first base runner. Yeah, I mean, it was a hard hit ball, but it was uh, an in-between hop for uh, for Peel on at second, and that's it. so he wasn't sure if he should try to handle that uh, with the glove side down or, or up, and so it hit him in the palm and 
bounced away. And so with an error, uh, Froning is on it first. Cole Knutson comes on, and Fergus Falls is coming out swinging. They have, any ball that they have hit has been a line shot. As that one goes into left field, Kai Holm plays it on the bounce and back in. Cole Knutson, first pitch hitting, gets a single. And Fergus Falls has runners at first and second now with two out. And here comes Brock Kachevar, who has a 95, a 0 0.95 batting average, the Otter shortstop. Well, the Spuds, after getting two quick outs, on the first two batters now have back-to-back uh, -back base runners reach and trying to get out of this jam. See if Kachevar's first pitch swinging. He takes a look at a called strike and, and falls behind quickly, 0-1. Well, a good pitch by Hafey, you know, not afraid. These last couple of batters have reached, uh, still coming back and throwing strikes. Hafey with the delivery. Down and out of the strike zone for ball one. Tried to sneak one in at the knees, but missed down low. And the count goes one and one. But that breaking pitch missing low, that's just fine as a pitcher. Rock Kachavar waiting. Here's Hafey's delivery, and it's fouled off to the right side and out of play. A ball and two strikes. And Brock Kachavar batting with runners at first and second for the Otters here at top of the first inning. Oh, that was another good pitch by Hafey, this time going upstairs with the fastball and uh, Koshner a little bit behind on that swing. Here's the one-two pitch from Sterling Hafey, and it's fouled back. Kachivar staying alive, and the count stays at one and two. Fergus Falls coached by Kevin Pearson, one of the finest athletes, all-around athletes in this part of the country in his playing day. Basketball, baseball, had a minor league try. Here's the pitch, and this one, swing, and a missed strike three. And the Spuds get out of the inning. They gave up a couple of runners, but nobody scored. And after one half inning of play, it is Fergus Falls, nothing, and Moorhead coming to bat. We go to bat at the bottom of the first inning, and for the Spuds, Tra Caden Triggs will lead things off. Warhead center fielder will be followed by shortstop Thomas Horan and uh, catcher Isaac Heckemeyer Howe. One thing about the breeze from the direction it's blowing, it's blowing right in from the barbecues, and <laughs> the hot dogs and hamburgers are smelling pretty good right about now. Yeah, it's going to be tough to uh, lay <laughs> off those. We may take a break about the third yeah. inning. <laughs> So Fergus Falls putting runners on first and second in the first inning, but did not score. And here come the Spuds now. Caden Triggs into the game as a 333, has a 333 batting average, left-handed hitting center fielder. The the on the mound for center the Otters. Six, Cole Froning, a 5.09 earned run average in his playing uh, as a pitcher in the uh, for the Otters who have had uh, a bit of a struggle getting wins. They come into today's game at 3 and 11, and the first pitch is fouled back for strike one. Yeah, but, you know, they've been playing better as of late, and then, you know, some looking at some common opponents, they split with Sock Rapids Rice. That's uh, a team that uh, uh, the Spuds beat this year as well. Pitch is right at the letters, or right at the knee, rather, on the inside part of the plate, called strike, and it's 0 and 2 
on Caden Triggs. You know, they also played a couple of close games against St. Cloud Tech, which Moorhead uh, w had to hang on for a 3-2 to two victory against them. Here's the pitch from Fronting, and it's way outside. Looked like he tried to take a little bit off that one and lost control of it, and it's out of the uh, strike zone for a one and two count. One ball, two strikes here on Caden Triggs. Yeah, first two pitches fastball. That was a breaking ball. And the one-two pitch is... Hit to the right side. Second base there to pick it up. Has some trouble with it, and that will be an error. Caden Triggs reaching. Had a one bouncer out to uh, second baseman Jack Baker. Had it on his glove, but dropped it and couldn't recover in time to throw on. And so Caden Triggs' error on Jack Baker is now resting on at first base. Well, both teams making an error in that first inning. We'll see if this one results in any runs for the Spuds as Caden Triggs, the leadoff batter, is on. Here's Thomas Aran, left-handed hitting shortstop, called strike. Good, pretty good idea where the strike zone is, Thomas Aran. 308 batting average, will likely make contact. And as he waits, Froning delivers. And it's hit again to the right side and behind the runner and to the first base side of second baseman Baker and into right field for a base hit. So Thomas Aran... Gets a base hit in his try here in the first, and the Spuds start things out with runners at first and second. And here comes Isaac Heckemeyer Howe. Moorhead catcher batting third in the lineup has a 421 batting average. And he also a left handed hitter for the Spuds. Yeah, he's got uh, hits in four of the six games that he's played this year. So a uh, very good hitter for the Spuds. And the pitch. And again, taking a good look on the first pitch, Isaac Henkemeyer Howe watches it go by for a strike. And Cole Froning has gotten ahead of each of the batters, but has lost them along the way. And runners at first and second as Isaac Henkemeyer Howe waits. And that one just missing. So the count evens up at one and one. Fergus falls outfield straight away. Well, that first pitch was a really good curveball. Uh, a lot of velocity on it. That's a tough pitch to hit. As Frowning checks the runner at second, here's the pitch. And another good fastball, but missing inside. And the count goes to two and one. Now two balls and a strike on Isaac Henkemeyer Howe. Burley, strongly built. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe waits. And he swings hard, and it's right back to the pitcher, and he overthrows at third. That's going to be one run. Here, Horan around third. He's going to go all the way down, and he scores. And so a two-run error on a uh, hit to the left side. Isaac Heckemeyer Howe ends up at second base. But Caden Trigg scores, Thomas Horan scores, and Moorhead takes a 2-0 lead. Well, the second error of the inning for Fergus Falls, and this one results in, in a couple of runs scoring uh, for the Spuds. And when you're facing a, a team like Moorhead, who has had a, a lot of success to start the season, you, you just can't give them extra outs. You know, they should have had a couple of outs, possibly turn a double play there. Um, and if you don't have that error at second base, maybe you get out of the inning without allowing any runs. But as it stands, you've got two runs in, a uh, runner at second, and nobody out. Kevin Pearson out and is somewhat animated in his uh, speech delivery as he's talking to his players. Uh, a couple of plays that uh, certainly are, were playable and doable, but misfired on the Otters. And as a result, the Spuds have grabbed a 2-0 lead as Sterling Hafey. The Spuds pitcher comes to bat. He's in the cleanup spot here with nobody out and two runs in. This pitch... On the inside corner at the belt, called strike one. The cleanup batter and pitcher number 14. Sterling Hafey batting 342 on the season. Back out on the mound, Cole Froning checking the runner at second. Here's the pitch, and it's fouled to the left side and behind the press box here along the third baseline and out of play, and it goes to two strikes. Sterling Hafey now behind on the count, 0-2. Well, Hafey comes into the game on a four-game hit streak. Also from the left side, Moorhead is dominant left-handed hitters. Here's the throw back to second, and he got him. He's picked off on a nifty move by Cole Froning, stepping off the mound and delivering a perfectly thrown strike to second base. And the uh, out there on Isaac Henkemeyer Howe, one, uh, one, five, six rather, one six on the putout. 
Yeah, Hinkemeyer Howe was really pushing that lead at, at second, and I think it was a surprising move. Typically on a right-handed pitcher, uh, they wheel and fire. This one, uh, he just stepped off the back of the rubber and threw it. And here's the pitch, and this one is hit hard, but to the right side, second base Baker is there, and quickly there are two out. Sterling Hafey, 4-3 on the put out, and here comes Kai Holm. So apparently Kevin Pearson's visit to the mound had some effect. I was thinking the exact <laughs> same thing. Yep, a couple of really good defensive plays, and now you got bases empty and two outs. Kai Holm is a 241 hitter. One of two juniors in the Spuds starting lineup here this afternoon and plays left field. Kai Holm takes a look at the first pitch for a called strike. Good fastball from Cole Froning has gotten him strikes. But the Spuds, with the help of a couple of Fergus Falls errors, have grabbed the lead here two to nothing. And the pitch or the count rather evens up now at one and one. Another left-handed hitter, Kai Holm. And the pitch up high, off the bill of the helmet, and out of the strike zone, two balls and a strike two and one on Kai Holm. Now Kai Holm, a very patient batter. He's got 13 walks on the season. And that one is down low for ball three. Five batters up, all left-handed. Greg Salvavold in the third base coaching box. Here's the pitch and fouled straight back. Just did get a piece of it to lift it to the backstop. And the count goes full now with three balls and two strikes. Well, and even though Kai Holm has 13 walks, he does have uh, a triple on the year, a couple of doubles. Well, good speed. Kai Holm takes a look inside for ball four. So Kai Holm draws the walk. Spuds have a base runner now at first base as Crisanto D'Agostino, Moorhead first baseman today, comes up to bat. He is the other junior in the starting lineup for the Spuds here today, batting at 235. Normally a third baseman, Crisanto D'Agostino, in at first here today. And he also, a left-handed hitter, swings hard and misses straight through, and it's strike one. A quick look down at the third base coaching box. Crisanto D'Agostino, not sure there's going to be much of a play on here with two runs in and two out. Batting here in the bottom of the first. D'Agostino, bat resting on his shoulder and waiting. Now as he waits, a waggle of the bat. And fronting a long look over at first before time is called by D'Agostino at the plate. He wants to reset. Well, you know, sometimes as a pitcher, you you delay uh, when you've got a runner on base trying to get a tip on, you know, whether something is on. If if uh, you can catch that runner taking a, a quick step towards second base. Kai home with his lead over at first. Froning checking the runner. This is a pop-up on the infield. Froning has made the call, and he makes the catch and gets out of the inning, but two runs have scored, and after one inning of play, it's Moorhead 2 and Fergus Falls nothing. For the Spuds in the bottom of the first inning. Next, we have Claire Stotono, escorted by Victor Bond. Oh. Next, we have Lucy Delorme, escorted by Isaac Christman. Next we have Ava Everson, escorted by John Tweeden.
excuse me, that's the cleanup batter, the catcher number nine, Cole Canusa. As we go to the top of the second inning, Otters will lead things off with Jack Baker. A 11 batter in the second baseman. Lines one in the left field. And the Otters are coming out swinging. They're really not taking any time at all to set and wait. They're going after the first pitch or second pitch and some good hits. And uh, Jack Baker now on at first with the single. That brings up Ian Stumbo, and he has... Looking for his, this is his first at bat in that he is 0-0. Oh and, oh, and that's from, and is the left fielder rather, Ian Stumbo. Strike one. Left fielder Ian Stumbo will be followed by Jack Culbertson. And if they reach, then Matt Scott. Yeah, the, the uh, Otters have really been hitting the ball hard off of uh, <clears throat> Sterling Hafey here tonight. Like you said, Larry, most of the time, first pitch swinging. Uh, have the batter so far. Sterling Hafey into the stretch and has a check of the runner at first and delivers. Off speed pitch, swing and a miss. That was a tough pitch to yeah, try really to get a good. hold of. That was a tough pitch. Yep, good change up by Hafey. So it's 0 and 2 now. Two strikes to count on Ian Stumbo. Batting here with a runner on at first in the bottom of the second inning. I had a quick throw over to first, but it was there in time, but it came out of the glove of D'Agostino, and so no tag applied. And Jack Baker stays on alive at first, but a good throw over by Sterling Hafey. And again the lead by Jack Baker. And on the check, here's the pitch. Delivered outside, may have been even high. As well, and Ian Stumbo now is behind on the count one and two. Right-handed hitting Ian Stumbo. Here's the pitch. And it's a line, soft line drive, and the return back is caught at second. And a quick throw over to first, but not nearly in time. So Ian Stumbo kind on the out there to Noah Pilon. Yeah, kind of a check swing there. He didn't really fully commit on that, uh, but it made contact and enough to get out to the second baseman, Pilon, who makes the catch. Here's Jack Culbertson, the Otters catcher, batting eighth in the lineup, a 138 batting average. Runner on at first and one out. First pitch strike. A good fastball down in the zone. Tough for a hitter to make contact with. Shadows have creeped their way onto the playing field. Here's a play over at first, but it bounces in front of D'Agostino and away. And Jack Baker, now rounding second, will easily make it his way into third. And so a throwing error on Erling, Sterling Hafey and the Otters now have a runner at third. Yeah, when with just one away, that, that could be a costly error for the Spuds as uh, that, that throw was down low. The initial throw over to first base was low as well. D'Agostino was able to knock it down, but this one uh, gets by him and into right field. And now the lead by Jack Baker is at third. One strike to count, and here's the pitch, and it's lined. Into left field, just getting past shortstop Thomas Horan, and the Otters are on the scoreboard as Jack Baker easily trots his way in from third on the RBI single from Jack Culbertson. So a couple of base hits and a soft line drive by the Otter batters here, scoring a run to bring up the number nine hitter, Matt Scott. 208 on the season, Otters third baseman. Third baseman, number three. Yeah, the Otters capitalize uh, on that error with a single to left field, and that scores Baker. Two to one now. Otters with a runner at second and one, or at first, rather, a runner at first and one out. Scott with a long look down at third base coach Kevin Pearson. Now stands in. Open stance for Matt Scott. Deep in the box. And he line drives that one, but foul. Past third base and down the left field line, but foul. So again, we're seeing a very aggressive offensive scheme set up here by the Otters, uh, by the Otters rather early on. And one strike to count now on Matt Scott. Well, and when you get into, you know, later in the season now, you've seen a lot of pitches and you've taken a lot of batting practice and runner it's paying is, off. Runner is going in a double clutch behind the plate by Isaac Henkemeyer-Howe. 
And there was no chance of catching Jack Culbertson, who is on at second now with the stolen base. Pitch was a strike, and so Matt Scott now is in the hole at 0-2. Runner with a short lead down at second. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up on the infield. Noah Pilon camping underneath at second, and the fly ball out there on the infield dirt, and there are two away. To the top of the order now, and Abel Lajo. He grounded out, pitcher to first, and is at bat in the first inning. Abel Lajo, the leadoff hitter, and a right-handed batter, stands in here with one run in. A runner now out at second, and two out. And this is another hard hit ball into straightaway center. This one has a chance to tie. Here's a throw, and it's on the line, but safe. He slid just wide of the plate, and the catch and the tag was late, and the Otters have come up with two runs here in the second inning, and this game is tied. Well, another solid base hit. Everything that the Otters have, have uh, hit as far as base hits go have just been on a line, and... This one to center field, fielded by Triggs and, and got the throw in on enough, you know, in enough time, but a good slide to avoid the tag, and the, the ball game is tied. Here is Nick Pearson. First baseman flew out for the second out in the first inning. Otter started the game with runners at first and second, and the first did not score, but they put two on the board here in the second. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe has that one roll away, but recovers. The pitch out of the zone, and it's ball one. Jack Baker has scored. Jack Culbertson has scored, and the Otters have tied the Spuds here in the second inning, 2-2. Two to two. As Nick Pearson peers out and looks in, open stance, lead foot up on his toes. Here's the pitch, and this one is hit deep to left field, and foul. He got around on it just a bit, hitting it into the wind, driving it back to the... Uh, um, into foul territory, and the count moves on out of one and one. Well, and as far as, you know, Sterling Hafey goes, you know, he's throwing a lot of strikes. That's a good thing, but the hitters are, are on his timing, and so he's going to have to start changing speeds a lot more, breaking pitches, off-speed pitches, uh, and not just uh, relying on the fastball. One, one, the count. Hebel Ajo, the lead at first. Here's the pitch, and... Uh, Check swing and catch made. Right out to the pitcher. Sterling Hafey was there. Nick Pearson lines out on the play. And Fergus Falls is out of the second inning, but scored twice. And after an inning and a half, it is Fergus Falls two and Moorhead two. Abby Ruck settling in with a look in and the pitch. And this one is lined into left field for a base hit. This one is going all the way to the wall. It is slow there. The Spuds are going to go for three, rounding second on our way in. The slide is there with a triple. A run scoring triple by Kate Gulbrunson, bringing in Thea Bradstein. And the Spuds are on the board here now to trail two to one. Leading things off for the Spuds here in the bottom half of inning number two. Designated hitter number 24, Caleb Sari. Spuds come to bat on the bottom of the second. Here's the designated hitter tonight, Caleb Sari. As a hitter is at 167 on the season, and he looks at the first pitch, a called strike. We're all tied to a piece here as the Spuds bat on the bottom of the second. From what I understand, I'm pretty sure Greg Solvable did not agree with that call. <laughs> <laughs> this one is lined to the right side and drifting as the wind pushes it foul, way foul. 
That one really didn't have much of a chance to land fair in the first place, but the wind certainly drove it off to the right side, and it's quickly two strikes to count on Caleb Sari. Yeah, any sort of you know left to right spin on the baseball is really going to be exaggerated by this wind. It's a lot like my golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> Very much familiar <laughs> with that part of the game. <laughs> Caleb Sari behind on the count 0-2, and, and he hits one up the middle. Gowled up there at short, and the throw on to first is there. 6-3 on the put-up. Caleb Sari goes out as Brock Kutchever feeds it over to Nick Pearson at first, and there's one away. Well, very protective swing there by Caleb Sari. Not, you know, a little bit unsure of the strike zone after that first pitch call, and so he kind of check swing on it just to make sure he's going to make contact and protect the plate, and it was a slow roller to the shortstop who made the play. That brings up Noah Pilon, Moorhead's second baseman batting at 259 and he takes a called strike on the first pitch Noah Pilon will be followed by Josh Swanson who gets the start in right field here this afternoon a two game hit streak for Noah Pilon coming into today's game Cole Froning peering in and now has the sign he wants and delivers a fastball that's fouled straight back Noah Pilon is now at 0-2 2-2 here bottom of the second inning Spuds batting with one out Cole Froning again peering in. Outfield straightaway infield at normal depth as the pitch is delivered. And this one is tapped to the left side. Picked up there at third. And a long throw across is there in time as Matt Scott got it over to Pearson. And there are quickly two away. Five, three on that put out. And that brings up Josh Swanson, number nine batter in the order. Well, nice play by Matt Scott at third base. Got the... Uh, the ground ball set itself and, and threw across the diamond with a strong throw on target to record the out. Number nine batter Swanson, one for one on the year. Right fielder today, Swanson takes a look at the first pitch at the knees, called strike. He's a right-handed hitter, one of the few right-handed batters for the Spuds. Well, that was a, a really good pitch by Froning, a good hard fastball right at the knees. Froning wheels and deals, and that one is down low. And Fastball that had a lot of steam on it, but missed the zone, and it's one and one. Yeah, just a little bit lower than that first pitch. That first pitch was right at the knees. And Froning delivers. Just missing outside, and it's ball two. So it's two and one now on Josh Swanson. Yeah, good eye by Swanson. That one was, uh, again, a good low fastball, but outside. And that one sailing away and out of the zone for ball three, and it's three and one now on Josh Swanson. If he should reach, the Spuds would go to the top of the order in Caden Triggs. Froning delivers. A strike. Just catching the knees at the outside part of the plate, and the count is full now at 3-2. and two. Yeah, really good pitch there by Froning. That's tough to hit. Josh Swanning on the payoff pitch waits. And that one... Just missing ball four. Good eye at the plate by Josh Swanson to draw the pitch out. And the Spuds have a runner at first and two out for Caden Triggs. Yep, good eye by Swanson. He maintains that, that 1,000 batting average. <laughs> Spuds go to the top of the order, and that means a long list of left-handed batters. And the... Swing by Caden Triggs, missing for strike one. Reached on an error and scored the game's first run in the first inning. Caden Triggs came in with a 333 batting average. At bat here in the bottom of the second, two runs are in, or two out rather, two out, and a runner on at first with the game tied at two. Count is evened up at one and one. Cole Froning leaning in, checking the runner at first. He's got a good move at first. And a long look over the shoulder, and then time is called. Well, we saw Froning do that in the first inning as well, just uh, when, with a runner on, really taking his time, trying to get something uh, tipped off from either the runner or the batter. Uh, but again, with, with two outs, you know, your focus as a pitcher should be on getting the batter, um, you know, because if that runner reaches second base and uh, uh, you haven't focused on the batter, it doesn't matter. 
Caden Traggs takes one up and out of the strike zone. Ball two, and it's two and one now on the Moorhead center fielder. You know, and sometimes <clears throat> that runner can get in your head as a pitcher too. Uh, that, that pitch missed badly to the outside. And uh, so again, refocus for Froning. A check of the runner to the stretch. Cole Froning delivers. And this one is fouled back. Went to the fastball, and it's fouled <coughs> off to the left side. Count is even now at 2-2 two and two on Caden Triggs. Well, much better delivery there for Froning. You know, a better pace. Uh, you know, a couple of checks of the runner, but get to home, home plate. Again, a check of the runner. Cole Froning leans in for the sign. Caden Triggs waits on the 2-2 pitch. Hit to the left side. This is a slow roller. And the throw over to first was wide and high, and the Spuds move on, and they've got a runner at third. So a double clutch at, the, at short, and then the long throw across. By that time, the runner was in. That's a tough call on an error or a hit. I guess I'm going to go with the hit on that one. It, it's got to be yep. because, uh, you know, even if uh, third baseman Scott is able to wheel and fire, I don't know that they can get Caden Triggs, the leadoff batter who runs uh, very well, and it was just hit, just a slow roller. Seven. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's a hit no matter what. Caden Traig's on at first. Josh Swanson on at third. Thomas Saran at the plate, batting at 308, hit a single and then scored the Spud's second run in the first inning, <coughs> batting here with two on and two out. Here's the pitch. Spuds are running, and this one's nubbed off to the right side. Haran just got a bit and tapped it towards the first base dugout. And so, Caden Triggs, who was well on his way, he was going on the pitch, returns to first. Well, a very heads-up base running by Josh Swanson to take third on the play. Um, you know, that sets up a, that first and third play that the Spuds have run so often uh, where you try to get that double steal. And again, the check of the runner as the pitch comes in. Caden Triggs is on his way to second. He'll get the second base on the steal. And now the Spuds have runners at second and third with two out as Haran faces a one ball, one strike count here in the bottom of the second inning. Froning delivers and it came inside and Haran just did spin out of the way and it goes to two and one now. Two balls and a strike on Thomas Haran. After returning from injury, Thomas Horan has been in eight games. He's got hits in six of those games. That pass pitch goes to two and one. Or two and two, rather. Two balls and two strikes here. Spuds now with runners at second and third. As Haran waits, Froning, a check of the runner. And the pitch, and this one is hit to the right side. Now we're going to have to hurry. And they get there just in time. His pitcher, Cole Froning, got over. 3-1 on the putout of Thomas Haran. And the Spuds threaten but do not score. And after two innings of play, it's Moorhead 2 and Fergus Falls 2.
We're all tied up after two innings of play. Spuds two, Otters two, and we go to the third inning. As Cole Froning will lead things off for Fergus Falls, followed by Cole Knutson and then Brock Kachavar. <laughs> Sterling Hafey on the mound for the Spuds. Cole Froning reached on an error and was stranded at second base after his at bat in the first inning and goes on a called strike. So strike one, the count on Cole Froning. Yeah, Hafey continues to challenge the batters, throwing a lot of strikes here tonight. Hafey delivers. Breaking pitch that caught the corner for called strike two. Yeah, really good breaking pitch. It kind of locked up Froning there. It started out inside and then broke over the plate. Quick worker, Sterling Hafey, comes right back up with a high, hard fastball that is way out of the strike zone. And it goes to one and two. A good idea on that pitch, going with a, a high, hard fastball, try to get the hitter to chase one. On the one-two pitch, that one is down low and nearly hit Cole Froning, but did not. He skipped out of the way, and the count evens up at two and two. Wasting no time, Sterling Hafey delivers a bouncer at the plate and off to the far side. And the count goes full now at three and two. Hafey has not issued a walk to this point and on the 3-2 pitch. Down low for ball four. Cole Froning reaching to start the top of the third inning for Fergus Falls and that brings up Cole Knutson. The yeah, Hafey after starting out with some strikes uh, just lost control of the zone and ended up losing the batter on a walk. Cole Knutson uh, had a single. <clears throat> and his at bat in the uh, first inning. Otter, right fielder, Cole Knutson. Here's the pitch from Hafey. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Well, the way the Otter started out the game, swinging at first pitch, second pitch, it was unusual to think that they would be able to draw a walk, but the pitches were uh, not that tempting. And so now with a runner at first, here is Cole Knutson waiting and swinging and fouling one back to the screen. Two strikes, the count now on Otter right fielder Cole Knutson. A good breaking pitch by Hafey. Uh, this one starting out over the plate and then breaking away. Knutson doing a good job of just getting a piece of it. Right-handed batter Cole Knutson waits, slightly open stance. Sterling Hafey with a look over the shoulder and here's the pop-up on the infield. But it got wide of third and could not be tracked down. Hayden Netland gave chase but didn't get there in time. It was a real soft blue hit to the uh, <coughs> Moorhead dugout area. And it's 0-2. <coughs> oh, two strikes. No balls and two strikes on Cole Knutson. Wants to change the sign and now goes to the stretch. And the pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. High, hard, fastball, Cole Knutson down on strikes. Yeah, that was the pitch that uh, Hafey wanted to throw against Froning. It just, uh, the one against Froning was, was much too high. This one was closer to the zone. Knutson right at the eyes, uh, took a hack at it and missed for the strikeout. That brings up shortstop Brock Kachavar, who struck out to end the first inning. Here's a throw to second, but it got through. Nice cover by Thomas Saran, the shortstop getting behind the bag to keeping the play there. And so the Otters have now a runner at second. Yeah, runner in scoring position now for Fergus Falls after battling back from a 2-0 deficit. A base hit could give them the lead. Kachavar stepping out of the box, looking down to the coaching area. Now steps back into the box and waits as Sterling Hafey checks the runner at second. And this one is bounced to the left side, off the fence and down the line. Foul ball there, one and one. One ball, one strike on Brock Kachavar. Otters have a runner 
at second base in Cole Fronning as Sterling Hafey delivers and another line drive, but this one is caught at shortstop Thomas Horan. He got the throw back to second in time. So a double play spuds as they get out of the third inning and after two and a half innings of play, it's Moorhead two and Fergus Falls two. Hastings comes up with it, sends it out. Here's Nolan Russell with a shot and a goal! Will Nolan Westbrook. Leading point getter with 40. With 12 goals and 14 goals for him, 26 assists. So the Spuds wrap it around. Score! So in five seconds to go. And it comes up to center ice. And that will do it as the Spuds. will come to bat in the bottom of the third inning. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe will lead things off. He'll be followed by pitcher Sterling Hafey and then left fielder Kai Holm. Henkemeyer Howe reached on an error in, his, in the first inning and was left stranded at second base where he got picked off. And so Isaac Henkemeyer Howe into the game as a 421 hitter after missing the first few games of the season has worked his way back into baseball condition as he stands in from the left side. Isaac Hankemeyer Howe. As he waits, Cole Fronning delivers up high and out of the strike zone, ball one. We don't see very much. Here's the uh, delivery and it's to the left side, but just ball a hard line shot, but just missing at third. And down the line, foul, and the count goes to one and one. We don't see a lot of shifts. No, not in, in, <laughs> not, not in well, high school. There's uh, not enough uh, data on these hitters that you know exactly where they're going to go. And this one to the right side. It has a chance, and but second baseman Jack Baker is there to get underneath in time, and a pop-up to the second baseman and one out. Yeah, Hankemeyer Howe didn't get all of that one, just kind of uh, popped it up. Uh, nearly got lucky with uh, the second baseman playing back uh, with Hankemeyer Howe being that left-handed batter, but uh, a good play to come in on the ball and make the catch was Baker. Sterling Hafey grounded out in the first inning, 0 for 1 today, and he lines this one into right field, and this one's got a chance it drops. Goes all the way to the fence. Sterling Hafey is on his way to second, and he'll be held up there with the throw coming in nicely. Cole Knutson tracking it down in deep right field just in front of the 315 mark, and the Spuds with that double now have a runner at second base with one out and Kai Holm coming up. Well, Hafey just hit that absolutely <clears throat> on a, a line. That's his fifth double leads the team in, in that category and gives the Spuds a runner at second here. Here's Kai Holm, Moorhead left fielder. <coughs> Pardon me, we came into the game with a 241 batting average. Drew a walk in the first inning. And that pitch is down low, nearly skipping away, but nice job behind the plate by Jack Culbertson to keep it in play. And out of the strike zone, it's ball one. Check of the runner. And Fronning's pitch, and this is a hard hit ball that bounces over the top of the second baseman. Sterling Hafey will score. And a quick retreat back to first base by Kai Holm, just beating the play back. He's on safely at first. A run is in, and the Spuds have taken the lead, 3-2. to two. 
A good RBI single there for Kai Holm on a hard hit ground ball. Maybe a little bit unlucky for the second baseman this Baker ball. as it, I think it hit the lip of the grass on the infield where the grass and the dirt meet and it took a high hop up and over the uh, the head of Baker and into center field. Yeah, there was no chance at the, on that short hop that uh, skipped right over the top of him. And that is one of the most undesirable plays <laughs> that an infielder can have. <laughs> Now a pitch comes on and D'Agostino fouls that one straight back. Strike one, the count now on Crisanto D'Agostino, who is at first base here this afternoon. He popped up in the first inning that ended the inning. A check of the runner. Cole Fronning and delivers. Missing high. And the count evens up at a ball and a strike. Now we've talked about in some of the earlier games that how uh, the Spuds really needed... Crisanto D'Agostino to get the bat going, and he certainly has done that. Here's the pitch, and Crisanto got around on that one and slashed it just wide of the dugout along the first base side and foul. So it goes to a one and two. A ball on two strikes on Crisanto D'Agostino. After, after registering just one hit in the first six games of the season, uh, D'Agostino is now on a five-game hit streak and batting 265. From the left side, D'Agostino waits. Cole Fronning checks the runner at first and delivers. The runner is on and a bouncer to the right side. And at second, picked up and the long throw across gets away. So it'll go as a base hit, but an error. And there's a throw now to the plate. And it is there in time. So nice recovery at first to prevent the run from scoring. The Spuds make some noise, but do not score on that play, and it stays 3-2. Yeah, Holm trying to come all the way around uh, was a difficult play up the middle uh, for the second baseman to make, and as the throw came across to first, uh, it, it got by the first baseman, it hit D'Agostino, and that uh, was tempting for Coach Salvable to send Kai Holm to try to score, but a nice relay from uh, first baseman to catcher to record the out. And here's Caleb Sari, the Spud's designated hitter, grounded out to short in the second. And a pitch out of the strike zone for ball one. Well, the Spuds have scored here in the third to take the lead. Threatened to score another, did not. As Cole Fronning checks the runner and delivers. That one is down and wide. And it's 2-0 and oh now on Caleb Sari. More had designated hitter. Cole Fronning looking in. A long look of the runner at second, and he lobs that one over the top. You're going to have to help me out on this I, one. I don't, I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, it looked like the ball. Did they call time? Oh, maybe. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> wow, I didn't see that one. It <laughs> no. flew over the top of Sorry all the way to the back out, and he just stayed in the box. And, or rather, the runner down. At first, Crisanto D'Agostino stayed on at first. And so we start this pitch over again. It's 2-0 and in that pitch. Catching the outside corner, called strike, and it's 2-1. and Well, quite frankly, I missed that one entirely. Not the first time. Well, Caleb Sari is another batter that the Spuds want to get going. He was 2-3 for three against Sock Rapids Rice last week. Throw over to first. Just a soft toss and back in safely. D'Agostino, as I have watched, is not a deep threat to run. Depending on game situation, he's on at first now with a 2-1 count on Caleb Sari, who delivers the pitch. And the uh, pitch is high, and guess who gets a stolen base? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Santo D'Agostino on at second. Oh. Uh. Well, that is his third stolen base, but he has been caught stealing once. Uh, so he, uh, you were correct, Larry. He's not a huge threat to steal, but in this situation, uh, with two down, uh, the Spuds wanting to get that runner into scoring position, he swipes second base. The pitch was way out of the strike zone, so it's 3-1 and one now on Caleb Sari. And he takes ball four, and so the Spuds now have runners at first and second with two out for Noah Pilon. 
You know, good eye by Sari to gain that, that walk for the Spuds. A ground out to short in the second inning, or correction to third in the second inning for Pilon. Spuds now with runners at first and second. For Pilon batting with two out, here's the pitch. Catching the corner, called strike. A good pitch there. Yeah, third walk given up by Froning here today. Here's the one strike pitch and a quick toss back to second, but not in time. He's got a nifty move, Cole Froning, back to second. Well, like I said, somewhat it, deceiving. Yeah, it's unorthodox. It's not one that the runners are used to seeing, and so, uh, but D'Agostino back in time on that one. That pitch fouled straight back. And it's now two strikes to count on Noah Pilon, and if he should reach, it'll bring up the nine, number nine batter, Josh Swanson. Cole Froning checking the runner and delivers. Foul tip and picked up, and on the actually it was a swing and a miss and dropped. And so the force throw over to first is there in time, and the Spuds are out of the third inning, but score one. And after three innings complete, it's Moorhead three and Fergus Falls two. And Carlson's pitch. And that's lined into left field. That's a base hit. That'll tie the game. So Hetland, uh, Netland delivers a hit and scores Triggs from third. And once again, for the third time, we're tied. The catcher, number nine, Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe. Free pasta bowl at Amy Fargo Moore at Noodles and Company location. Our thanks to Noodles and Company and Urban Gerberts for their sponsorship of Spud Baseball this 2019 season. So we go to the fourth inning, and Fergus Falls will send Jack Baker, the second baseman. He'll be followed by Ian Stumbo and then Jack Culbertson. Three to two, Moorhead has. Taking the lead at their at bat here in the bottom of the third. And Fergus Falls has been always nibbling at the plate, nibbling at the field. They've been putting runners in scoring position. And trail by a run coming to bat here in the fourth inning. Jack Baker saw the first pitch sail up and away. Here's a grounder to third base, Hayden Netland with a nice throw across, but wide of the bag where it's picked up and gathered in by Crisanto D'Agostino. So a bit of an adventuresome play from third to first, but they out-recorded. You know, sometimes you, you try to guide that throw, and I think uh, Netlin just didn't didn't unleash it and just wanted to make sure it was on target, and uh, it just pulled D'Agostino uh, towards the outfield, but made a nice pick on the play. Ian Stumbo, line drive out in the second inning, batting here. In the fourth inning for the Otters, trailing three to two. Ian Stumbo hits one to the left side. Picked up there and thrown across. Netland has been involved in the last two plays and thrown the Otter runners out at first five, three on that put out. And there are two away. Yeah, and see that one was, was much better. Netland just got the ball in his glove and <clears throat> Uh, just wheeled and fired and didn't really think about it. That first throw, I think he was just trying to guide it over to first base. That brings up the number nine hitter, Jack Culbertson, batting at 138 coming in, had a single and a run scoring single. And he himself later came on to score the Otters' second run, batting here in the, bottom, in the top of the fourth inning, trailing three to two. Kevin Pearson with a short visit at home plate before returning to the coaching box. Jack Culbertson standing in and waiting. Open stance, takes a look at a pitch out of the strike zone for ball one. 
A good breaking pitch by Hafey, just missing low. Hafey looking in to the windup and the pitch to the infield. Shortstop Tommy Horan comes in, fights off the sun, and was able to hang on and makes a snow cone catch. Three, three up and three down for the Otters in the fourth inning. And after three and a half innings of play, it's Moorhead three and Fergus Falls two. Sterling, Sterling Hafey has faced the minimum in the last two innings, six up and six down. And the Spuds have a 3-2 lead as the Otters will come to bat here. As Moorhead will come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. And leading things off, Josh Swanson, the right fielder, reached on a walk on a base on balls in the second inning. Cole Froning has gone all the way. He's pitched in and out of a couple of jams, trailing here 3-2 as he faces Josh Swanson. Shadow's now creeping on towards the mound area. That'll even things up between hitter and pitcher. As the pitch goes to, or the count rather goes to one and two. One ball and two strikes here on Josh Swanson. Cole Froning peering in. Open stance, wide open stance by Josh Swanson as he waits. And there's a call, strike three. Just did catch the corner on a nice breaking pitch from jo and uh, Josh Swanson goes down to open the fourth inning. Yeah, Swanson definitely not looking for that breaking pitch and Froning uh, came across and got one to break one over the plate for the strikeout. And we go to the top of the order and here's Caden Triggs. Reached on an error and scored in the first, a base hit in the second. Batting here in the bottom of the fourth inning and a pitch at the letters for called strike one. Yeah, another breaking pitch is uh, exactly the same pitch he just threw to Swanson for a strike. Three, two more head. Cole Fronning's pitch missing and it's one and one. Top of the order for the Spuds, all left-handed. It's two and one. And this one is right back to the pitcher. Frowning there to pick it up. He double clutches and throws it away. Another Otters error. And Moorhead will have a runner on at third as he comes all the way around. And we've got a throw there, but no, not in time. And so a three base error puts the Spuds in scoring position here in the fourth inning as Caden Triggs and now there's nobody at home and the run scores. 
Fergus Falls catcher Jack Culbertson had gone over to the dugout and rather nonchalantly knowing that the play was over but not realizing play can continue. He left the position, nobody there to cover. Very alert play by Caden Triggs and the Spuds lead it four to one. Or four to two rather, pardon me, four to two. Yeah, and that's gotta, because it was a continuation of the play, that's gotta be a four base error on, on the, uh, the pitcher. Well, I'm gonna leave the uh, scoring to the professionals on that one. Here's the pitch. Just missing inside, and it's ball one. Caden Triggs <clears throat> reaching first on an error on the throw by the pitcher, and on the ensuing play came all the way around to score. I don't know where you'd score the error there on the throw because there was no throw to the plate. Uh, there was nobody there to throw to. And maybe that would be, as you said, a four-base throwing error right from the get-go. Yeah, it has to be yep. because, like you said, there wasn't another throw. It was just a continuation of the initial throw, and, and uh, you know the catcher being out of position doesn't. Yeah, that's not an error. That's not an error, so. Wow. <laughs> Thomas Oran has just reached on a walk. And here's Isaac Henkemeyer Howe reaching on an error. Popped up in the third, 0 for 2 on the day, and this one gets away from Culbertson, and the Spuds have a runner now at second base. And that one uh, hit Hinkemeyer Howe. Isaac, Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe is hit, and so the runner would have advanced to second regardless. Hit by pitch, Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe, and the Spuds have runners at first and second now with one run in and nobody out. Here's Sterling Hafey. Every facet of the game, it's been a good game for Sterling Hafey, both pitching and hitting. Bounced out in the first, doubled and later scored in the third. Boy, it just isn't often you see a four base throwing error. Nope. Here's the pitch. Missing inside. Well, and it, it almost, you know, has to happen that way where it's a, a throw that ends up in, you know, one of the corners, like the right field corner, as that one did. It was retrieved and then run back in, knowing that if he threw, there would be nobody there to catch it, and so just continued to run it in. And by that time, too late, this Caden Trigg scored to make it 4-2. to two. This one has fouled straight back. Count evens up and a ball and a strike. Left-handed hitting Sterling Hafey. Bats left, pitches right. Tap of the plate, he's ready. Runners at first and second, Moorhead. Fronning taking a look, checking the runner, taking a look, and delivers. Swing and a miss. Strike three, and Sterling Hafey down on strikes. And there are two outs now for the uh, Spuds as Kai Holm comes to bat. Reached on a walk, hit a single, an RBI single in the second. And bats here with a 4-2 lead in the fourth inning. Just missing, that was a dandy pitch thrown by Cole Fronning, but just missing the zone, and it's 1-0. You know, I, I like Fronning's delivery a lot better when he is working with some pace. And that one hits the batter. You know, Kai Holm will take the uh, will take the base. That's the second hit by pitch here in the inning. Spuds have the bases loaded now for Crisanto D'Agostino. You know that that first pitch uh, thrown to Kai Holm, a very good pitch, and it was come to your set. You know, out of the stretch, come to set and throw. And then uh, that second one, it, it was a delay after the set and it got away from him and, and hit Kai Holm. So, it, you know, if I'm if I'm a pitching coach for uh, Cole Fronning, that's something you definitely work on is the delivery. Kevin Pearson has taken this opportunity to come out and he was uh, had to come out in the first inning and had a very successful trip to the mound. We'll see how the Otters respond here he, as he now walks away as the home plate umpire was heading out to check in on things. Cole Fronning stays on, but the Spuds in this whole process have loaded the bases. 
for Crisanto D'Agostino batting here with two out. Batting four more at first base to number Well, you know, if you look at it, uh, you know, Fergus Falls has really been their own worst enemy here. Yes. You know, with, with uh, well, four, they have four errors on the game. Here's the pitch. Just missing outside. Talking with Kevin Pearson prior to the game, he said the Otters have been there. It's just that they've given away too many runs to their opponents, and the record reflects that. Here's the pitch here. And that one's on the corner called strike, and the count evens up at one and one. So many facets in the game of baseball. And not a lot of margin for error. Here's the pitch, and that one is way up high. Count goes to two and one, that one. D'Agostino. And as I mentioned earlier, you're playing a, a team the caliber of Moorhead, and you give them extra outs, it's not usually going to work out in your favor. And that one misses inside, and the count goes to three and one. No room for Crisanto D'Agostino. Three and one the count. Runners take their lead, and here's the pitch. Up high for ball four, and he'll get credit for an RBI on that walk as Thomas Saran comes trotting home. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe moves on to third. Kai Holm now checks in at second. Crisanto D'Agostino with the walk, and the Spuds now lead at five to two. And that one's inside. Who has been in and around the strike zone to this point. Cole Froning now has hit a couple of batters, has issued a walk, and here's a line drive into left field, and that one will drop for a base hit. Chased down and played on the first bounce and quickly returned in. D'Agostino checking in at third. A single, and then a fielder's choice run down to second. And the Spuds have added two more, and it's now 7-2. to two. Well, we talked about Sari and getting his bat going, and uh, and uh, well enough, that's a, a good, solid double to the left field corner and scores two on the play. Caleb Sari, you going to give him a single or a double? A uh, double. All right, there it is. Second baseman number 12, Noah Pila. A two-run double by Caleb Sari, the Spuds' designated hitter, has given more at a 7-2 advantage here in the fourth inning. And that pitch up out of the strike zone is Noah Pilon. Watched it go for ball one. 0 for 2 on the day, a ground out in the second, striking out in the third. And the pitch. It's missing inside. <clears throat> Runners taking their leads at second and third as the pitch is up and out of the strike zone for ball four. So Noah Pilon on at first, now on the walk. And once again, the Spuds have the bases loaded. And the, the Spuds have batted around as uh, Josh Swanson started the inning with a strikeout. And he bats now here again. Josh Swanson striking out to start the inning. Right fielder number 15, Josh Swanson. Bats here now with four runs already in and a 7-2 lead with two out. Here's the delivery. At the letters, called strike. Josh Swanson waiting as the pitch comes in up high for ball one. Wood has not been without their base runners here this afternoon. Twice now in this inning alone have loaded the bases. As Crisanto D'Agostino takes his lead down third. The pitch down in the dirt. And it's two and one. A good block there by Culbertson. Uh, as uh, D'Agostino was creeping down that third baseline, anything that got away from the catcher, he was breaking for it. A check of the runners, and the pitch is grounded to the left side. Third baseman scoops it up, steps on third for the force, and the inning is over. But the Spuds score four. 
And after four innings of play, it's now Moorhead seven and Fergus Falls two. For the spots in the bottom of the Through four innings of play, Fergus Falls with two runs on four hits and two errors, and the Spuds have seven runs on four hits, and also a couple of errors on the day as we go to the fifth inning. And Fergus Falls will start things off with Matt Scott. Matthew Scott batting here in the uh, top of the fifth inning. Popped up in the second, oh, he's 0 for 1 on the day. And now bounces it to the right side and reaches safely. Now yeah, that'll be an error on uh, Netland on the, on the throw from third base. He's had a couple of errant throws. And uh, D'Agostino has bailed him out once or twice, this time able to at least keep it in front of him to uh, prevent Scott from advancing any further than first. So with a runner at first and nobody out. A quick throw over to first, but back in safely. That brings up Abel Ajo. Grounded out in the first, hit a single in the second, one for two on the day. Deep in the batter's box. Here's the look by Sterling Hafey as he delivers. Off-speed pitch that just misses inside. Seven two Moorhead, Fergus Falls batting in the fifth. Here's the pitch, gets away. Hafey delivers that one all the way to the backstop. And so Matthew Scott checks in now at second on the wild pitch. And the count moves to two and oh. Well the Spuds after Putting up four runs in the bottom of the fourth certainly don't want to get into a situation where they're giving runs back as uh, Scott checks in at second base. A number at home plate, but foul as it came to the near left side. And the count moves to two and one. Two balls and a strike here on Abel Ajo. Otter center fielder batting 346 coming in. One for two so far today. Steps out of the batter's box and looks. Kevin Pearson, no sign given. Ajo back in the box. Gonna change the sign here as it's waved off by Sterling Hafey and now he goes to the stretch. Here's the pitch and a soft line drive. Caught at second base, Noah Pilon racing back and into short right field. An over the shoulder catch there by Pilon and there's one away. Yeah, really nice play by Pilon. Had to get a, a quick break on the, the ball because it was hit just far enough that where uh, it was going to be a difficult play for him and really no chance for Swanson to come in from right field. And uh, so if Pilon doesn't make that play, it's in for a hit. Here's Nick Pearson, Otter's first baseman. 0 for 2 this afternoon. And he takes a pitch down low for ball one.
Nick Pearson will be followed by pitcher Cole Froning as the Otters bat here in the fifth. And a check of the runner. Hafey delivers. Fly ball deep center field. Not coming in on the play. It ends up in medium center field. And the catch made by Caden Triggs. And there are two away. Well, there haven't been a lot of, you know, we talked at the beginning of the game about the wind, and there hasn't been a lot of balls affected by the wind, but that one certainly uh, looked I like was it, held was, up. it was, it would look like it was hit better it's than where it five. ended up, oh, but um, Triggs doing a nice job of getting into position and then coming in to make the play. Cole Froning bats, and he goes to the left side. Thomas Aran underneath it to make the catch on the infield dirt, and there are three away. So the Otters get a runner as far as second, but do not score. And after four and a half innings of play, it is Moorhead seven and Fergus Falls two. Otters will make a pitching change here as they face the Spuds in the bottom of the fifth inning. That brings on Michael Weidrich, who uh, steps in out of play in place of Cole Froning, who went through the first four innings. And uh, the Otters trail now seven to two. Cole Froning had a lot of, there were a lot of miscues out on the field the errors that allowed runners, throws that were errant. And as a result, his pretty well-pitched game is not going to be looked on that way when you trail at 7-2. Caden Traig's leading things off for Moorhead. Ten batters went to plate in the fifth inning for the Spuds. And Caden Traig's now has taken a look at the first two pitches from Weedrick out of the strike zone, and it's 2-0. Triggs will be followed by Haran, and then Isaac Heckemeyer Howe as the Spuds go 1-2-3 at the top of the order. That pitch way up high, and it's 3-0. Well, it's always important, too, when a new pitcher comes in to make uh, that pitcher establish the strike zone. And the pitch. Missing inside for ball four. So Caden Triggs draws a walk, and here comes Thomas Haran. A single, a ground out, and a walk and two runs scored here for Thomas Aran this afternoon. Batting here with a runner down at first in Caden Triggs. A fake throw by Weidrick over to first. He never released the ball. He had stepped off the mound, so he in effect becomes a fielder. As he peers in for the sign, then takes a, run, a check of the runner at first. Michael Weidrich delivers. He's also a right-handed batter. He threw that one up high and near the bill of Thomas Horan, who spins out of the way. Mm -hmm. 
Left-handed hitting shortstop Thomas Horan. And the pitch, and again that one sails up and in. Well, with Horan single in the first innings, now hit safely in seven of nine games this season. And the pitch, Horan watches that one. Up and away, and it's 3-0. Seven straight balls delivered by Wiedrich to start the uh, appearance here. On in relief, Michael Wiedrich. And on the 3-0 pitch, just did catch the inside part of the plate called strike. And it's now 3-1. Haran has two runs scored this afternoon as the Spuds have mounted a 7-2 advantage batting here in the bottom of the fifth, and that pitch is up and away for ball four. So back-to-back -back walks, and the Spuds have runners at first and second. And that brings up Isaac Henkemeyer Howe. He was hit by a pitch and then scored a run in the fourth inning. Grounded out, or and then reached on an error, rather. He reached on an error in the first and then was picked off second. And uh, grounded out in the third inning, so 0 for 2 on the day. Pitch is down low, and Hankemeyer Howe dances out of the way for ball one. Spuds with a 7-2 lead, batting here on the bottom of the fifth. Check by Michael Wiedrich, and the delivery. And that one is up and out of the strike zone. Well, as, as most high school teams are this time of year, especially with the spring that we've had, uh, a lot of teams playing a lot of games in uh, a short amount of time, and it really puts a strain on your pitching staff. Kevin Pearson was mentioning that last week was a five-game week, and this coming week is a four-game week for the Otters. The Spuds are having a six-game week as they go into tournament play tomorrow in Bemidji. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Home plate umpires motion for a runner to take first on a walk and his called strike signal. Very similar. And it's two and one. Or three and one rather, and that's ball four. So straight, three straight walks delivered by Michael Wiedrich to start the fifth inning. And Moorhead now has bases loaded. Caden Triggs, who drew a walk to start the inning, now at third, followed by Thomas Oren, now at second. Nice, can't come out how. And a quick visit out to the mound by Kevin Pearson. Brings up Sterling Hafey. And they're going to make a pitching change. Matt so Scott coming into pitch now. Compliments of Moorhead Baseball. Matt Scott becomes the third pitcher for Fergus Falls here this afternoon as he comes on in relief of Michael Wiedrich who faced three batters and walked all three. And Wiedrich's going to go to left field. And I'm not sure if that brings Stumbo into third then. Can't see well, we'll the numbers. <clears throat> we'll keep an eye on things as they, they have gathered around the Pitching mound now as the pitching change has been made, bringing on Matt Scott. Nice performance at the start for Cole Froning. Hold in the fifth inning after the Spuds had manufactured Four additional runs in that half inning to take the 7-2 lead. Michael Wiedrich came on in relief, walking the three batters he faced, and that brings on Matt's Matthew Scott. Yeah, and that could have been a, a pitch count uh, reason to, to make that change because Froning really was pitching a, a pretty good game. Uh, like you said, Larry, it's not going to be looked upon that way, having given up seven runs, but uh, not many of those earned. So we're ready to go. And with that... Cole Froning does take third base now. Right.
Next event for this month, the cleanup batter. Pitcher number 14, Sterling Hafey. Sterling Hafey bats here on the bottom of the fifth. As Baker delivers, a big swing by Hafey, swing through the pitch, strike one. Be interesting to see now what Matthew Scott has in store. He looks to have what some would be called junk pitches in that they are slow, they're slow breaking pitches. And that one hit the dirt. And the count evens up at one and one. It yeah. does throw your timing all off when you take the uh, pitching from Cole Fawning and then to the uh, slower pitch delivery. Now from Scott on this one is lined into right field. That'll score one. And then the runner will be held and the bases will stay loaded. So a nice throw back in from right field, holding the spuds to just one run on that base hit by Hafey, who gets an RBI and the spuds now lead at eight to two. Yeah, Cole Knutson out in right field getting that ball in quickly. Really no chance for Thomas Haran to score on that play. Haran now takes his base at third. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe is down at second. Base hit by Sterling Hafey is now at first base as that pitch hits Kai Holm. And he'll have an RBI as he's hit by pitch. And the Spuds now lead at nine to two. The first baseman, number 26, Prasanto D'Agostino. And still nobody out. Haran has scored. Hankemeyer Howe takes third. Hafey now at second. Holm on the hit by pitch at first. And it's nine to two. Scott's delivery is down low. And ball one, the count now on Crescento D'Agostino. 0 for 2 and a walk. Moorhead first baseman, Crisanto D'Agostino today. As Matt Scott goes into the stretch and the pitch. Just missing. And it's 2 and 0. That was a pretty close pitch, just a little down and in. Not uh, what D'Agostino was looking for. Bases are loaded. Spuds with two runs in here in the inning. And the pitch, he went down, tried to golf it, tried to nine iron it out of the batter's box and hit it off to, <coughs> pardon me, hitting it foul to the right side. Yeah, sometimes as a hitter you, you get anxious and you want to you wanna drive in some runs and that, that one I think was a little out of the strike zone. And the pitch, down low, <clears throat> and it's three and one. Three walks, a single and a hit batter. Spuds still batting here in the fifth inning with two runs in and bases loaded. Baker delivers and that one is down low and that's an RBI walk to Crescento D'Agostino. Well, a little, little closer around the strike zone anyway. Um, Matt Scott kind of trying to keep the ball low you know, that's not a bad that's thing, but um, you got to be able to hit the zone, Caleb too. Sorry. That brings up Caleb Sari, who bats still nobody out with bases loaded, and the Spuds now lead it 10-2. They're going to make a change here now as the Spuds. Pitch hitter for the Spuds, number 27. Grayson Brayton. Brayton. So here comes Grayson Brayton. Batting here in the fifth inning. Bases loaded from the right side. Spuds need two to put this one in the win column. That pitch is away, but recovered nicely by Culbertson. And it's 1-0. and Culbertson back in the batter's box. Slightly open stance waiting. As Matt Scott. Goes into the stretch and deliveries, and that hit the batter. Another run forced in. Grayson Brayton batting there for Caleb Sari, and it's now 11 to two. 
Yeah, Brayton not, not real happy about that pitch coming inside. I think he wanted to get his hacks up there and instead hit by pitch. Does get an RBI out of it. Spuds batting with Noah Pilon. Chance to put this one away for the Spuds. The infield is in all the way around, and the pitch is down and scooped up by Calbertson, who has been busy here keeping the ball in play here in the fifth inning. Nine-run lead, Moorhead. Ten-run rule in effect after five. Here's the pitch, and that one gets away, and that may very well do it as Culbertson got it through his glove and off to the side, and that wild pitch brings in the deciding run, and the Spuds get a 10-run rule victory here over Fergus Falls. A recap of the game in just a moment as the Spuds walk off the field with the win. Moorhead 12, Fergus Falls 2. For the Spuds in the bottom half of the fifth inning, five runs, one hit, no water errors. So the Spuds get their 12th win of the season, and they move to 12-2, and two, heading into a weekend tournament this weekend in Bemidji with some stiff competition waiting for them. They're, they could play three games, I think, this coming weekend, starting tomorrow and Saturday in Bemidji. Grand Rapids is a possible opponent. Uh, Duluth East is also waiting in the wings, and uh, it'll cap off a six-game week for the Spuds, who, uh, like a lot of other teams, had struggles early on to uh, get games played, and uh, now they're catching up. Yeah, that's what happens, and as we talked about, I mean, clearly that, you know, it was a, a, an issue for Fergus Falls here tonight was the, the, the pitch, uh, the pitching situation, not enough arms, not enough innings uh, available for for kids to round out all these innings and all these games, um, but very important uh, going into a tournament for the Spuds as they start to look forward to the the postseason and getting their rotation in order and making sure that their timing is on and they're hitting. With the loss, Fergus Falls leaves Moorhead this afternoon with a 3-12 and one-loss record as they head into their next competition. And with the win, the Spuds are now 12-2. and two. Our final score this afternoon at Matson Field. It was a five-inning, ten-run rule. Spuds 12, Fergus Falls 2.